Uh, the master's classes of 2019 elected Jose Javier Lujano uh, to speak on their behalf. Jose earned... <laughs> Jose earned his dual undergraduate degrees in political science and sociology from Santa Clara University. After college, he worked as a policy analyst for the mayor of San Jose, California, on whose election campaign he had served as a field organizer. Last summer, Jose worked in DC as a research assistant with the Obama Foundation's My, Brother, My Brother's Keeper Alliance. Uh, Broderick Johnson sitting here, I think, had something to do with that. <clears throat> He's completed internships in the US House of Representatives and abroad for the UK's Labor Party. Here at the Ford School, Jose served as diversity officer for the Student Affairs Council, our graduate student leadership group. Jose plans to put his skills and education to work in the public sector, finding ways to end homelessness and build inclusive communities. Jose, it's an honor to welcome you to the podium. Good afternoon, everyone. Buenas tardes a todos. I'm honored by the opportunity to speak before you today. Antes que nada, quiero agradecer a mi familia y a todas nuestras familias, las presentes y aquellas que se unen por live streams. Saludos y gracias. I'd like to tell you a story about a remarkable woman. Her story starts about 1,800 miles away in the northern Mexico town of Canatlan, Durango, Mexico. It was there that Rosa, the oldest girl of four, was born in 1961. Rosa, like any child her age, followed her family where they went, from the ranch to small town to the big city. They eventually made it to the border town of Tijuana, where, despite competing interests, she became the first in her family to complete compulsory education. Tijuana was where she went to school, but in my mom's story, it was just a stopping point on the journey northward. You see, my grandfather first came to the United States through the Bracero Migrant Farm Worker Program, and it was here in the state of Michigan that he was first inspired to immigrate. My mom grew up hearing stories of opportunity in faraway places like California or Washington. As a child, she dreamed of one day owning her own home having a fulfilling job that provided for her family, perhaps even the flexibility to take her family on a small vacation, her American dream. She strived to reach great heights, sometimes falling short because of family necessity, but she never gave up on the belief that better times were around the corner. While going through any difficult time, she would always say, as is often said in Durango, puro pa'lante, never look back, always hold your head up high. As a kid, my mom's journey to the United States was simply a story about a time gone by. But now as an adult, I can fully appreciate the magnitude of a young 19-year-old woman's sacrifice in search of opportunity. To say yes to the prospect of risking one's life because the alternative is simply unacceptable, while deeply saddening, also brings to bear the notion of hope and vision, enough to counterbalance the risk to one's life. Coming to America was never simply about it being better than the alternative. It was about opportunity and vision. We are all on a pursuit for opportunity of some kind. Each of us chose to pursue a path of public policy. This path brought us each to Michigan. Like many of you, I chose to pursue public policy to help my community and figure out ways to tackle the most vexing issues like homelessness and access to affordable housing. Because these problems and issues we often debate, debate amongst ourselves are not just outcomes and measurements. They are true stories about real people like you and me. And together they comprise the communities we represent. As masters of public policy, we are empowered to take the tools we learned in and out of Wild Hall and make with them communities we can be proud of. Communities that welcome all who dare to come and make it possible to achieve one's dreams and create boundless opportunities for those that come after. I certainly won't be the last to tell you that times are tough for too many of us. Across the board, it seems that the machinations occurring in the head of the current occupant of the White House stand to test our resolve and seek to further divide and marginalize rather than uplift and empower. 
We know this. We talk about it. But despite this present reality, I am so hopeful. Now, more than ever. About all the good each one of us will do once we walk out of those doors as masters of public policy. Together, we've had difficult dialogues about the direction our country is going and where we go from here. What began in the classroom and eventually made its way to 40 parties and tailgates will soon find itself cast into the spotlight as each one of us embarks on our careers and makes good on the work that began here. Our search for opportunity doesn't end with this major accomplishment. Rather, it is only, be only beginning. Whether here in Michigan or wherever you choose to make a home, let's continue to seek opportunities to make our homes better for everyone. It was because of a young woman's daring search for opportunity that I can stand before you here today. The kid from East San Jose that dared to dream big and say yes to a once in a lifetime opportunity to tell my community's story and through that to be able to tell my story here today. To my peers, I say thank you. Thank you for making this the greatest college experience of my life and for the 40 family that I can now proudly claim as my own. It wasn't all parties, late night homework, and trips to Pretzel Bell. We often came together to celebrate, but if necessary, we supported each other through the difficult times. You, the students, are the real reason we are the top public policy school in the country. To this institution, which one March morning unexpectedly sent me the best news I had ever gotten, that they wanted to invest in me and my growth, I say thank you. Thank you for providing students from all walks of life the opportunity to study and value public policy so that we may be better stewards of our communities everywhere. To my mom, you will forever be my hero and the reason I am here today. While I know you are not physically here today, every single day that I can claim to be a graduate of the University of Michigan, I owe to you. To all of you, I thank you, every single one of you. Go Blue. Thank you so much, Jose.